Good morning, guys, on day seven on the Camino Frances doing it on an e-bike. Today is the first week we're crossing the halfway point. We're doing 75 kilometers all the way to Mancilla de las Mulas, very, very close to uh, Lyon. And I think I will be a day ahead if I keep going at this pace. So if I get another day, maybe I can go to Fisterra. Who knows? Leaving super early this morning because everyone started getting up like at 5.30. The lights came on at 6. What are you going to do? Extremely windy this morning and it's like 55 degrees. So yeah, see you at sunrise. All right, I'm at the 17 kilometer stretch. The sun is uh, not even out yet, but we're getting the, the light. It's a dawn, yes it is. Just been seeing uh, a steady line of pilgrims making their way through this stretch. And uh, it's only two hours. So they started like at six in the morning and they already done about 10 kilometers. Crazy. Not as cold as it was yesterday leaving uh, Burgos, but yesterday it was like in the mid 40s. My fingers were frozen stiff. Now they're fine. Uh, I'm using the buff early in the morning and then the layers start uh, coming off. Today I have a reservation in, <laughs> in Mancilla de las Mulas. Yes, I, when I was there in uh, the albergue laying in bed with Wi-Fi, I decided to uh, guarantee a spot over there because it's a tiny town and it only has a few places to stay and the municipal is closed. So the first one I called, they didn't take reservations and I'm glad I didn't get one because they had bad reviews online, mostly because they're renovating the place and there's construction going on as you're staying there. So I'm staying in another one that has high remarks. So let's, uh, let's see how good it actually is. <sighs> Almost at the next town where they have a bar there. So maybe I'll have some orange juice when I get there. And uh, yeah, great morning, man. Just left super early, earlier than I'm used to, earlier than I want to. I actually had to turn on the lights on the bike for the first time, which uh, takes a little bit of the juice out of the battery. And I think I should have uh, plenty because I'm doing less than I did yesterday. And yesterday I wasn't planning to go as far as I did, so. You know, when I'm conserving the battery, when I'm kind of managing how much I'm using, how much I have left by the time I make it to the halfway point, that math was way off yesterday. Today is going to be better. Today we're in, uh, in the plains. I think there's less to see than even yesterday. And yesterday we had some great uh, places that we went through. So yeah, also today we have the Roman road, but I'll talk about that when we get to the split. For the next 12 kilometers, the Camino aligns with the ancient Via Aquitania, a 2,000-year-old Roman road connecting the cities of Bordeaux and Astorga. As pilgrims walk this portion of the Camino, they're retracing the steps of both ancient Roman travelers and medieval pilgrims on their way to Santiago. After completing the long 17-kilometer stretch from Carrión de los Condes, pilgrims will arrive at Calzadilla de la Cuesa. This small town offers three albergues and two bars, giving pilgrims multiple options for both accommodation and refreshment. Quick uh, pit stop in the Digos at this uh, bar, the only one or the first one open today because the one at the end of the 17 kilometer stretch was closed. Maybe they know when the pilgrims start arriving and that's when they open. Anyways, I stopped here for just some uh, orange juice and a quick uh, pit stop. I took uh, the road there for a long stretch because it follows the Camino. The temperature starting to slowly go up, which is nice. 
it's time to start taking off the layers man my butt hurts yes yesterday i did a very long uh, day by the time i made it to carrion de los condes i was in pain what's up buddy come over here come over here you want to be in the vlog huh yes you do right what are you looking at <laughs> all right <laughs> see you guys The time had come for me to bid farewell to the province of Palencia, which I had only entered the day before. It was then that I encountered a fellow traveler pushing a trolley. At the time, I had no idea that just a few months later, I too would be relying on one during my second pilgrimage on the Camino Frances on foot. It seems like it was only yesterday that we entered the province of uh, Palencia and now today we're entering Lyon. We're here at the border. We're not far away from the city of uh, Chagun, the halfway point of the Camino Frances and where I was supposed to stay today but it's way too early for that. So yeah, let's go. After crossing the N120 road, I took a dirt path that led me to a medieval bridge over the Rio Valderadway and onto La Ermita de la Virgen del Puente, a Romanesque chapel that was built by the Knights Templar in the 12th century. According to local legend, the chapel was constructed on the very spot where a group of shepherds had a vision of the Virgin Mary. In honor of Sahagun's 1200th anniversary in 2001, Marin de la Red crafted a monument consisting of two guard statues that mark the halfway point of the Camino. The statues portrayed Alfonso VI, King of Castilla y León, and Bernardo de Seriedad, one of the town's founders. Well, there you have it, crossing the halfway point. Met a, a South Korean pilgrim there, ex-military, just retired, doing the Camino. He was all over my drone, just wanted to see it, wanted to take pictures of the drone filming him. And now I just met another one here that is all over my bicycle. I guess he wants to take the ride all the way to Santiago. Super early in the morning, so I still have to keep going. This is kind of like the halfway point. So it's gonna be an easy day. I've only used like one bar out of five in my battery. So I don't know, maybe I could make it to Leon, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna take it easy because I'm already one day ahead of schedule. Maybe we should go for that second one. If you're walking the Camino Frances and reach Algun, be sure to stop by to collect your halfway certificate. While wandering through the town's narrow cobble streets, take notice of the various Camino murals that add to the town's charm. Don't miss out on the chance to visit the famous landmarks of Iglesia de San Tirso and the Iglesia de San Lorenzo. In addition to the churches, you have the Monastery of San Benito and the adjacent Arcways. So this is uh, the split on the road that I mentioned to you guys before. You have an option here. If you go right, you're going to follow an old Roman road, probably straight as an arrow. It's only one town along the way between here and Mancillas de las Mulas. It is only two kilometers longer, but the other one, the official Camino, goes through three different towns along the way. And some people just decide to stop in uh, El Burgo Ranero, which is uh, way before getting to Amancilla de las Mulas. I'm gonna follow the official Camino. Let's go. This section of the Camino is uh, very well known for the dirt path next to the road under the shade of uh, these uh, trees and it lasts about two days to cross it. In my case, this was my worst section of the Camino Frances in 2017 simply because when I got to El Burgo Ranero, everything was full and the next town is like 13 kilometers away. So that day I did like a 42, 43 kilometers which were just uh, brutal. 
So here's uh, my dilemma. I've already been on the road for 53 kilometers and I've used two bars out of five. The other three, according to the computer, says that I could go 40 kilometers at the rate that I'm going and Lyon is 41 kilometers away. So it will be closed just like yesterday and I don't know if I should go or stay, stay or go. I mean, it's not even noon yet and I'm almost at El Burgo Ranero. Who knows, we'll see what I'll do. I'll make a decision while having lunch. Maybe I'll get a little bit of a charge from the place and nothing is set in stone until it's done. You guys know me. So here I am in Mancillas de las Mulas. It is only 12.30 in the afternoon and I still have more juice than I care to count. I think it's like a 50 kilometers and uh, I'm not far away from uh, Lyon, so that's where I'm heading. I already called the uh, burger where I was supposed to stay today that I had a reservation, Gaia, and uh, no hard feelings. So I'm gonna continue on. I thought about having lunch here, but I don't see anything open, maybe just before uh, leaving town. If not, I have lunch at the White House. What? Casablanca, just before the, the famous bridge up ahead. It's been a great day, man. I've just been on the road like 75% of the time. That's why I'm gaining so much ground and so fast. I'm constantly going between 20, 25 kilometers an hour. I've been turning it off and only using it when I really need it. And uh, it just uh, saved a lot of uh, battery. I still have like three bars left. Here I am in Casablanca where I'm having the menu del dia, which is gonna be a lot of food. I'm starting with a paella followed by salmon with a caña, bread and water. I could have had lunch in Leon, but you know, I wanna take my time now since I'm so close to it. If I get there too soon, the, the burger might be closed. From now on, it's just a relaxing ride into a big city where there's no a canal. There's no river, there's no river path that I can follow just to avoid the industrial section. On this one I have to suck it up and do it, but I don't remember it being uh, that bad. So yes, Lyon man, tonight I'm gonna eat facing the cathedral. The Villarante Bridge dating back to the 12th century stretches over the Porma River. In the past, the river posed a significant danger to pilgrims, especially when the waters ran high. As a result, several hospices were established. The bridge is an outstanding example of Romanesque architecture, boasting 17 pointed arches and river vaults, rivaled only by the bridge in Hospital de Urbigo. On the final approach to Leon from Puente Villarente, yeah. the 11 kilometer <laughs> journey takes you through a mix of urban and industrial landscapes. The Camino follows the M120 road, taking you past factories, large stores and metal bridges. The runabouts and suburban areas give way to the city gates, marking the beginning of Leon's historic district. These streets are all too familiar, as the last time I was in Lyon, I was setting off on the Camino de San Salvador to Oviedo to connect with the Primitivo.
So made it to the municipal albergue in Leon after the longest day so far at uh, 96.16 kilometers long. But I do have to admit that it was also pretty flat in backcountry roads, so it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Made it to the albergue, uh, took my shower, got a bottom bunk bed, and also they're doing laundry for me right now. Yes, eight euros to wash it and dry it, so they're gonna take care of that for me. And now it's just time to go out and explore this town. La Plaza del Grano boasts two stunning fountains, both constructed in the 16th century with intricate carvings and designs on stones. Now every October, Leon hosts the Fiestas de San Froilán, a vibrant medieval festival featuring colorful processions, music and dancing that fills the streets of the city. With a rich cultural heritage and stunning architecture, Leon is a must-visit city for anyone interested in history and culture. One of its most impressive landmarks is the Gothic-style cathedral, built in the 13th century and widely considered one of the most impressive cathedrals in Spain. Following the Pilgrim's Mass, led by the nuns at Albergue Santa Maria de Carval, I set out to explore the vibrant nightlife scene. You can get lost visiting the various bars and restaurants in the surrounding neighborhoods. I'm in the heart of Barrio Humedo, where I decided to stop for something to eat. Went to this uh, Mexican restaurant and tried Cochinita Pevil which is a traditional oven-baked roasted pork from the Yucatan Peninsula, which was just delicious. I went to the cathedral to get a stamp, but it was closed. So what are you gonna do? Heading back to the albergue right now and tomorrow. You guys know what's coming. Another one of those days we're leaving La Meseta behind, finally. And we're gonna start to climb and climb and then climb some more. Thank you guys for watching. I saw a subscriber here that met me by the cathedral. So thank you so much, Maria, for stopping by. And uh, I think there's another couple of subscribers that I will be seeing tomorrow along the way. So see you guys at eight in the morning.